mentioned, I'm an architect with Ryder Architecture. Um, the aim of our practice in Vancouver is to uh, create great architecture, sustainable architecture, and we are focusing on the passive host standard as a uh, key methodology in our process. Uh, I'm going to speak today very briefly about the passive host design at a very high level. Uh, first, why passive hosts? In 2015, the Paris Climate Conference produced a global consensus agreement addressing climate change, representing a widely but unfortunately not universal understanding that the need to cut greenhouse gas emissions is an urgent issue facing us all. Improving energy efficiency and reducing energy demand are widely considered as the fastest, cheapest, and safest means to mitigate climate change. Briefly put, buildings consume energy that produce greenhouse gas, both in construction and in use. Reducing these values is crucial. As abundantly covered by many of the speakers today and to follow, uh, Passive House is a quality assured building energy standard with real measurable reductions in energy use and therefore reductions in emissions. Passive House is essentially a methodology and standard for the design and construction of buildings that use very little energy to heat and cool a building. It's a standard that can work equally well in cold climates as it can in hot climates, but it isn't a one size fits all solution. Passive House is really about creating the optimal design response specific to the site, location, and typology. In reality, Passive House modeling and detailing can get pretty geeky pretty quickly if you let it. The key is to look at the architectural pro process of designing a Passive House through a lens of common sense and good architecture first, and not to get too, wrap too wrapped up in detail before you're ready and before it's appropriate to the phase of the project. The architectural design uh, uh, process rather, begins with schematic design where the client's requirements and desires as assume architectural form. This conceptual stage is all important as where a clear understanding of the design brief, project parameters, site, budget, etc., can be creatively channeled into a responsive architectural form. However, from a design perspective, before putting pen to paper, it is important to first understand the basic concepts and methodologies of Passive House. Design of a passive house is essentially about understanding the implications of each design move made. Succinctly summarized by L. Ron Burrell, an experienced architect and passive house writer from New Zealand, there are five principles about passive house that you need to get right before you delve into the details. These principles are methodology, location, orientation, form, and construction. The design process is much simpler the more you understand and adapt to these basic principles. Design to the Passivo standard fundamentally demands the need to work with all stakeholders and consultants as a holistic team and to approach the project as part of an integrated process. Design really begins with, a long, with long standing best practices, a thorough understanding of site, climate, precedent, uh, and the design brief with all parties on the same page. Uh, the design brief in a passive host project is very similar to any other project, however, with the added nuance of having strict energy use limitations. Like designing to a cost budget, designing to the passive host standard essentially means you're also designing to a strict energy budget. Avoiding expensive and impractical design decisions from the outset and designing with thoughtfulness, practicality, and rigor are key to, keys to success. An understanding of the site is also crucial to, that's crucial to any architectural project, but it can make all the difference in a passive house. Careful consideration of the environmental forces, natural features, existing vegetation, path of the sun, et cetera, et cetera, is necessary to create a truly effective and responsive architecture. A thorough understanding of the architectural vernacular is also critical in this process. This is fundamentally an understanding of how and why traditional building forms address the particular traits of the climate and context and in the sustainable and economical uses of building materials and resources. In a passive house, the design of the shell or envelope enclosure adheres to the same principles, whether in cold climate or not. Airtight, well insulated, with high performance glazing. As everyone knows, the basic difference is that in cold climates, the building is oriented open to the sun, and in hot climates, you protect the building from the sun. I, I love that quote. Uh, it is important to note that a passive house is fundamentally different from a passive solar house. Solar gain is important to a passive house, but the impacts must be understood to be managed. The key is to keep the heat where you want it, either in or out, optimized to suit, and balanced with all other energy sources. Once the context and site are understood, establishing a basic building form follows. Targeting an energy efficient design suggests a design that is efficient in its form. 
The form is more if the form is more expansive and sprawling, or with extraneous jigs and jogs, the problem gets that much more difficult. Passive house may still be potentially achievable, but generally with more and more insulation, and thus greater cost. Optimized design is key. Essentially, practicality suggests smooth it out if possible. In general terms, a simple form creates a simpler and more cost-effective path to passive house performance. Basically, when looking at design options, if the exterior wall area of one highly articulated option is double that of another, the insulation and performance value will be double as well. Passive house is a performance standard, plain and simple. There are no materials or methods prescribed as to how to build a passive house, uh, only performance metrics. Not to be confused with five design principles, a passive house building will feature these five basic technical aspects. These are essential to achieving the required energy performance. Certification of a passive house is only undertaken at the end of the design process when the PHPP energy model is completed and the design is fully proven out. However, one of the best tools for an architect in initiating design and testing passive house is Design PH, a plugin that's readily available for SketchUp software. Design PH is uh, designed to allow and encourage an iterative process, giving real-time high-level PHPP energy modeling feedback on the design decision-making process. This allows the design team to study and evolve the architecture, tracking changes in massing, form, height, orientation, and so forth, as with any other architectural project, with the benefit of having real-time feedback. In summary, uh, designing and building to the passive host standard is not mandatory in Canadian jurisdictions uh, yet. And I say yet because the recent changes in building codes and energy performance standards are definitive steps in that direction. As witnessed around the world in warm climates and in cold, low energy design is quickly becoming our new normal and is simply becoming another aspect to our design brief. Thank you.